One man discovered his journey. I introduce him to you tonight. His name was Frank. Frank was born on September the 8th, 1877 in Alabama. He was born into a drunkard's home. His dad would drink and would beat Frank unmercifully. Frank one day was on the way home from school as an eight-year-old boy. Two well-dressed boys came up and they were sons of bankers. And they said, as they laughed at him, uh, he was shabbily dressed. And he, Your daddy's a drunkard. Our dads are bankers. He went home and mother forced it out of him. And she found out he was crying because of the fact that he was called a drunkard's son. Assuring young Frank that it would be okay, son. One day, you're going to wear good clothes. Most of all, one day, God is going to use you to be a great man of God. It was Christmas time in Frank's home. His uh, father wasn't yet, yet home, but he decided that he'd make it a very good Christmas for his daddy. He didn't want his daddy to be drunk that year. He gathered up all the liquor out in the barn he could find and throughout the house. And Frank poured all the liquor away. His father came home that Christmas Eve, already drunken. And he said, where's my liquor? And Frank said, well, Daddy, I, I threw it away. I dumped all of it so we'd have a good Christmas. The father was enraged. He, he took a heavy, a heavy whip and the butt of that whip, he began with that end to whip his son. Blood is all over that boy's head and face and body. Mother rushed in and sought to stop it, but there was no stopping it. He left. The father left and the doctor came. He said, I don't know if Frank will make it through the night hours. In the morning he did wake. The doctor said, he will live, but he'll never be the same. He'll be an invalid. Father came and he was now sober that morning and, and he said, oh son. He said, son, I'm so sorry. Daddy didn't do it. Daddy didn't do it. The liquor did it. The liquor did it. Please forgive me. He said, oh son, this liquor has ruined and wrecked my life. I would beg that you would grow up one day and go up and down this country and preach and speak about the wickedness of alcohol. Frank had a very unusual upbringing being raised in that drunkard's home. In 1889, there was cattle wrestlers in the area there of Texas, and they came to shoot his daddy. But in the midst of it all, Frank was shot several times as a young boy. He made it through the night, and he made it life. But again, another setback for the young boy by the name of Frank Norris. We know him as J. Frank Norris, pastor, America's pastor at that time. J. Frank was saved in an old brush arm meeting in 1890. Shortly thereafter, he was called to preach. He uh, at first kept it a secret, but eventually told his mother. And she said, well, son, I knew from the time that you were three months old that God was going to use you to preach his word. Even before you were saved, I asked God to make you a preacher. Everyone in life, as you became a preacher, they either loved him or they hated him. There's no middle ground with J. Frank Norris. He advised presidents. He advised Winston Churchill. He was the one that gave direction to World War II. He pastored a great church in Fort Worth, Texas. It became the largest church in America. Over 5,000 people would come every Sunday, come back on Sunday night to hear what they called the Texas Tornado Preach. A church in Detroit was without a pastor, and they called him. They said, we want you to pastor. He said, well, I'm already pastoring the church. They said, you can do both. Both those churches were America's two largest churches. You did not know if he was going to be in Fort Worth or if he was going to be in, in Detroit. What a mighty, mighty man of God. Both church grew to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and he ministered to both at the same time for 13 years. Norris is what we would call a fighting fundamentalist. He fought the liquor crowd. He fought gambling. 
He fought the communists. He fought the courts. He fought the liberal theologians of the day. And he would fight them. One day on a Sunday morning, he announced in his church, I am going to tonight expose a man in this church that is living in sin and immorality. His wife doesn't know it, but tonight I'll call his name. They said that afternoon, 13 men came to his office and said, please, don't put my wife through this. I want to confess I've been living in sin. He was fearless. J. Frank Norris Church had the great radio ministry and towers, the large, large choir, the big, huge adult Sunday school classes and the small children's classes and the great seminary and then the college institute. And he produced men and women for the gospel ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we consider the journey of J. Frank Norris, as a child, it wasn't a very pleasant journey being beaten by a father repeatedly. Seeing your dad embarrass you publicly as a drunk. But he loved his father. He did have a good mother. And young person today, I don't know your background. Perhaps there's not a father or not a mother in your home. Perhaps there is drink, drunkenness. Perhaps there's drugs. Perhaps mother and dad are not in your life. And we could hide behind the fact that I have an excuse I have a reason not to turn out for God. I have a reason not to find my journey in life. But the truth of the matter is, we all have things in our lives. And we could say we're going to allow that to derail our life. But you still have a journey. You still have a race. You still have a course to run. And it is our prayer that this week, as we speak about the journey ahead, you'd realize that God has a wonderful course for you.